Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Throughout history, any alliance between Berlin and Moscow has meant a threat to Poland. The Hitler-Stalin Pact, known as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, was an agreement of a deadly nature. It was the de facto fourth partition of Poland, as set out in the secret annex to the pact, the contents of which Poland's ally France knew immediately, but did not tell Poland. Poland found out on the 1st of September, 1939. As historians point out, Hitler and Stalin's collusion of the 23rd of August 1939 opened the way for Germany and the Soviet Union to launch a joint armed attack on Poland. The result was that the territory was divided as part of the Fourth Partition. Formerly, it was a non-aggression pact between the Soviet Union and Germany, which is actually a bit strange, since Germany and the USSR did not share a common border. The pact was named after the foreign ministers of the Third Reich and the USSR, Joachim von Ribbentrop and Vyacheslav Molotov. Hitler, colloquially speaking, secured his rear. He made a deal with Stalin and tore up a possible bridge to an agreement with Western countries. Finland, Latvia and Estonia were to fall to the USSR and the Third Reich was to take Lithuania. As for the Polish lands, the border was established along the line of the Narev, Vistula and San rivers. An agreement between two totalitarian criminals, primarily at the expense of Poland, but let's remember that really what was at stake here was the creation of a sphere of influence for both dictators, for the Third Reich and the Soviet Union, a violation of such notions as sovereignty. The 23rd of August is not only the date of the signing of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, on that day we also celebrate the European Day of Remembrance for the victims of Stalinism and Nazism. The year 2023 marks 15 years since the European Parliament established the 23rd of August as the European Day of Remembrance for the victims of Stalinism and Nazism, the two cruelest totalitarian regimes of the 20th century. The choice of the date recalls the 23rd of August 1939 non-aggression pact between the German Third Reich and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, also known as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. In Warsaw, in the courtyard of the Mazovian Provincial Office, an exhibition opened entitled The Imperial Face of Modern Russia, Putin's State. We were thinking about a worthy place for the inauguration of the exhibition revealing the imperialism of Russia, and the provincial governor came to my mind. A special place because it combines two worlds, the world of the provincial office and Warsaw City Hall. The author of the exhibition is the chairman of the Warsaw Polish newspaper club, Adam Borowski. This exhibition was born in my mind even before the war, before the full-scale war, and I had started to realize it after the outbreak of the war. It shows the fate of Russia from the collapse of the Soviet Union until today. The date of the opening of the exhibition is no coincidence. The involvement of Mr. Adam Borowski gives us, on the anniversary of the signing of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, the opportunity to stop for a moment and reflect on the new history of Poland, as well as the old one. The title of this exhibition refers to Russian neo-imperialism. The exhibition can be admired for the next two weeks at Platz Bankovi in Warsaw. Today, Ukraine celebrated National Flag Day. Tomorrow, Ukraine will celebrate Independence Day. Meanwhile, four educational workers were killed and four others wounded in a Russian attack on a school in the city of Romney in northeastern Ukraine. Our flag is our strength, the source of will and the unbreakable spirit for all, for all the warriors that go to battle, carrying this flag on their armor and under their hearts. They fight for every meter of our land, they advance, they will reach victory. Our flag is our memory, it is respect towards all of our heroes of different times that protected our land and gave their lives for Ukraine. We will always remember Remember them. The time will come when this flag will proudly hang over our entire free and peaceful country. Meanwhile, in the northeastern Ukrainian town of Romne, rescuers are continuing their efforts to clear the rubble of a damaged school. The regional military administration said a drone fired by Russia had hit the school at 10.05 a.m. local time. Ukraine's interior minister Ihor Klemenko said the bodies of the school principal, vice principal, secretary and a librarian had been pulled from the rubble by rescue workers. He said four local residents were injured as they had been passing the school in Romne, which is part of the Suma region. Ukrainians continue to show their bravery and determination, fighting for the nation's independence every single day. Ukraine's commander-in-chief, Valery Zoluzhny, released drone images showing a Ukrainian flag raised in an embattled southeastern village, honoring the country's National Flag Day. Earlier today, the Indian probe Chandrayaan-3 safely landed on the moon. In the history of space conquests, this is the second Indian attempt to land on the moon. 
Meanwhile, for the Russians, their first such mission to space in 50 years ended in spectacular failure, as the engine of the lunar probe ran for half a minute too long and the probe crashed into the moon's surface instead of landing. Scientists and officials clapped, cheered and hugged each other as the spacecraft landed and people across India broke out in celebration, setting off firecrackers and dancing in the streets after nearly 7 million people watched the YouTube live stream of the landing. Sir, we have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. This moment is unprecedented. This is the moment of developed India's victory. This moment is new India's victory cry. Our moon mission is also based on the same human-centric approach. Therefore, this success belongs to all of humanity. And it will help moon missions by other countries in the future. I am confident that all countries in the world, including those from the global south, are capable of achieving such feats. India's Chandrayaan-3 probe has landed on the moon. The landing was made in the region of the South Pole, where ice deposits can be expected in shaded craters. Future lunar missions could use them for crew oxygen and water supplies and for fuel production. The Russian probe Luna 25 headed to the same region a few days ago, but its mission failed. Failed lunar missions have been plentiful recently. In 2019, a previous Indian attempt failed. The same year, an Israeli lander crashed during a landing attempt. This year, Japan's attempt failed. Since landing on the moon is still a difficult endeavor, India's success is all the greater. Previously, missions from the former Soviet Union, the United States and China have successfully landed on the moon. India's Vikram lander will release the Pragayan rover onto the surface of the moon. The experiments will last for one lunar day, roughly equivalent to 14 days on Earth. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather. Poland Daily Business and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.